the Engineered Angler. I'm back in the shop and I'm not sure how to introduce this particular video but uh, I guess straightforward. How about 3D fish scales on your lure without any carving? Stick around. So if you're like me and you watch these guys who are just absolute artists and uh, just attention to detail, unbelievable. Some of these really talented and artistic lure makers and I'll put a couple links in the description so you really need to check them out. Um, and they sit there and they make these beautiful hand carved wooden lures with every single scale carved by hand. Um, I probably couldn't get past two scales, <laughs> I would just wear me out. But uh, this I can do. It isn't uh, super fast, but it's a lot quicker than carving. Let me show you what I do. So I had this idea uh, several months ago and I was searching on the internet for this. These are called scalloping shears. These shears have this cutting edge that have this scalloped edge. So it cuts a pattern that's very scale-like. Um, this particular one, I'll put the, uh, the length of where I got it. This one is a uh, five millimeter. And that's the diameter of the, the scallop uh, round, I guess. I think I paid somewhere around five or six dollars for this, including shipping. It's pretty robust. I'm feeling some pretty good steel thickness. It's nicely made. There's not any slop in it. So I'm pretty happy with it. I'm, I'm surprised that the quality is uh, as good as it is. So here's the concept. You take the kind of foil you normally use for foiling lures. This is uh, the HVAC foil. So the preparation for the strips that go on the lure are done by making two cuts. The first cut is the scallop cut, which I'm not using any kind of a guiding tool or anything. I'm just cutting by eye and you can see it cuts a nice scallop shape. The next cut is a straight shape. This one is uh, pretty easy to do. You just have to kind of find your comfort zone on how close to the edge of the scallop you want to go. You can't go too close because it'll show on your on your pattern and you can't go too far because it'll make uh, these vertical sort of indentations on it. So what I found is about a sixteenth, maybe uh, 3 30 seconds if you actually have any idea what 3 30 seconds looks like in your mind. And, and there it is. That's, that's essentially what one of these scalloping strips <laughs> looks like. On this side of the lure, I've got the pattern begun. And it's as simple as you might imagine it is. You lay on your pattern, I match them up at the top, and then you just do a half a scale offset, as you, as you probably already figured out. Let me just put one on there and I'll show you what that looks like. Pull the backing off this tape. And of course, you have to start at the back of the lure coming this way so you can overlay them properly so that three dimensionally they'll be correct. So. Now I'm just going to line them up with the, the pattern I have going. In other words, that's a half of a scale offset. And, and then I'm just going to line it up all the way along the body. One of the nice things about this is these thin strips really will conform to, these, to the body shape really well uh, and makes it really easy to do this. And then the next step is to just sort of slice it off at the center line on top and on bottom. The fact that these strips are so thin makes it real nice to be able to take the foil all the way to the center line of the lure and you actually get to foil your whole lure unlike your traditional foiling where you end up having a gap in the middle. I'll show you how to, how to uh, sort of refine this edge in a minute. On this side that I've got nearly finished, what I did on the on the head is I, I went ahead and did a solid piece of aluminum for the head and the gill plate area here. And I left a gap in inside the gill for some paint and so it looks a little more natural. It turns out one of the really nice things about this little process is that you can actually smooth out this top surface with a, a very fine sanding block or just a piece of sandpaper and just sand in the direction of the scales and this becomes really smooth. Sanding it like this gives you a nice 
smooth surface over here for that initial clear coat. And you can do that top and bottom, obviously. Let me do another row. So you offset a half a scale. And then you just run it across those little peaks all the way to the other side. And that's it. You can also use your burnishing tool, whatever kind of tool you use, and just make sure that you run it in the direction of the scales. So one of the things I really like about this is that it gives you some uh, versatility. You can actually not do the whole body. You can paint in or draw in a lateral line on the fish and then maybe just do the scales above the lateral line. Or you can etch in a lateral line uh, and give it that little extra realism. Let me try it. And there you go. That looks kind of cool. I think when I paint it, that's really going to stand out. I'm going to go ahead and continue to put this stuff on. Uh, and then I'll do a video on painting it. So anyway, this is the result uh, so far. So this isn't the beautiful hand carved uh, quality that you see some folks do, but it's not as flat and and two-dimensional as uh, just the spray pattern that we all do with a little bit of mesh. Um, it's kind of a halfway mark and it also gives you that foil effect. So thanks for watching. Thank you to all the uh, new subscribers from the world of uh, lure painting. Uh, thanks for all the questions. And I'll see you on the next one. Be sure to go to the Engineered Angler Facebook page. That's where you'll see sort of heads up on the new stuff that I'm coming up with and I'm making videos on. See you next time.